Hey guys, welcome to Learn Feng Shui, where you'll learn feng shui from a classical point of view, taking out the myth and superstition. If you like weekly tips as well as fun folklore tales, you'll enjoy learning feng shui with me. Hey guys, today we're going to talk about what a compass reading can tell you about your home. A compass direction can tell you a lot about the type of energy you're receiving into your home. That's why when a feng shui practitioner does an assessment of your home, they'll always ask if you can take a compass reading or they'll take out their little pan and do their own reading, usually right outside your front door. In addition to telling us, you know, how the house is oriented and how we can actually lay like an energy mapping over your space, there's other things that direction can indicate when we're looking at your home. And the first one is if your home falls in between 180 degrees or uh, zero degrees. So if it's facing either 180 degrees or it's facing zero degrees on the compass, that could indicate you are actually in what is called a void line. So what does a void line mean? Having your home sit on one of these void lines, it's particularly in the facing and sitting direction, could indicate that maybe you feel unfulfilled in life. Like it could be a big indication. And if you happen to have that issue and that is the way your home is facing and sitting, it could be affecting you in that way. Generally, the zero degrees and the 180 degrees facing direction are best reserved for a spiritual place. So usually like a church or, you know, a temple or something would be best located or best situated on one of these lines. This would require further assessment by a trained feng shui practitioner, but generally things like tilting a door frame and having the front door receive a different type of energy might be helpful. Again, a consult a feng shui practitioner because there is some things that can be done to change this energy a little bit. Another thing that your facing direction could indicate could be a feng shui issue. So particularly in a year where that animal sign is governing it. So remember, you can find your animal signs within your home too. They're what are called the earth branches. So they're just called earth branches. And remember, just like you could be born under an animal sign of a dog and a pig and a rooster, there's dog and pig and rooster within your home. This temple is called the 24 mountains. Each sector of your home, like north, can be broken down into like north one, north two, north three. And the area of north two governs the animal sign of the rat. So it's, you know, just that type of thing, right? So this year in particular, the animal sign is the tiger. So that area of northeast is associated with the tiger. So it's going to be Northeast three, particularly. So if you have a home that usually sits East or faces East, and you notice this year, it's kind of swinging to the Northeast. That means you could, you know, have some sort of affliction in your home. It could represent there may be some issues coming up, particularly when it will fluctuate towards the animal sign that is the Thai soy for the year. So again, if your home generally it faces east and this year you're like, it's really facing northeast. Like that's that's the direction I keep getting when I've taken multiple compass readings. That could mean that maybe this year your home may be affected by the Thai soy more. So it just means that you may have some issues within your home. You know, maybe you need to up some good feng shui areas of your space. But yeah, keep in mind when the home fluctuates between the guas particularly, remember the guas are north, east, west, south, southeast, southwest. And so when a home fluctuates between like east or northeast or east or southeast, that means that particularly during those Thai soy years or the years that come in with that animal sign, your house may feel the effects of that. So speaking of the animal signs within our home and looking at where those are located, another big indicator that your home could be very impactful on you is that your house faces what is called the earth branch. Again, that's just the animal sign. So if your home faces one of these animal signs, that means that the people within your home, if their animal sign uh, combines in a way or it connects the energy kind of interacts in a certain way that means that their house could have more of, a, of an effect during certain years so for example my home faces 
a the horse direction. It faces south too, which is the horse. And so I know during certain years, because of our our children's you know nat- their natal charts, their astrology charts, um, that it who it's going to affect the most within my household. And so I can kind of look at that and see you know certain years will affect. Um, certain people more depending on where certain afflictions are within the home. So the animal signs, if your home faces an animal sign, that tells you who in your home could be impacted by certain energies that you're and if you listened to the segment and you don't know where to find any of these areas on your in your home, you don't know what where your home faces, I can help you with that. I offer to do a free floor plan um, energy mapping for listeners of the show. So you just have to send me your floor plan and I have to get a little additional information from you, but you can shoot me an email um, at the link below if you're interested in that. So there can also be a spiritual component to the readings. And this is usually determined when a feng shui practitioner is able to go on site and bring a low pan out. And so that is one of the benefits you can get from having somebody take measurements for you and with the low pan because a feng shui master is going to recognize if the needle is swinging in a strange way. So there's certain ways we can look at on our low pan and it'll tell us different things about either the property or the home. The first one is tilting. So if a feng shui, you know, the compass needle is either tilting up or down. And so it can, you know, different, um, either the head tilting up or down means something and either the back tilting up or down means something. Um, if the needle swings too hard, so if it swings real hard and it stops really abruptly, that could also have a meaning to it. Um, if the swing doesn't stop. So if you really have, you know, if we have a time where the needle keeps spinning around and we're not able to actually get a reading that indicates an issue also. Um, So there's some different things like that we can look at with the actual needle and being on site that we wouldn't be able to see otherwise. And here's what that can mean. So sometimes it can indicate you have an earth problem, like, you know, some kind of disaster may happen within the home. Sometimes it indicates a spirit, either malevolent or a protecting spirit, you know, or an ancestor spirit. So all of the the swinging and tilting and everything mean, you know, we would look at that to see where what it meant. Um, also it could mean maybe there's a burial plot from back in the day. Maybe there's a dangerous spirit there, or maybe the ground just itself is not conductive to having good feng shui. Um, yours, the quality of the land also is assessed when we do feng shui. And so that's one of the most important things. So having this external reading and having a strange a needle reading could either indicate maybe some electromagnetic issues also, or that the land's just not good feng shui in and of itself. For today's Folklore Friday, we're going to talk about the legend of the Waving Kitty or Maniki Niko. The legend of the Maniki Niko comes today from the Japanese shop.co.uk. The Japanese lucky cat is traditionally known as Maniki Niko, which translates into the beckoning cat. According to ancient Japanese folklore, it's a good luck charm and symbolizes good fortune in business and happiness. Although there are many stories surrounding the true origin of the lucky cat, one of the most popular tales of all is the legend of the Gotokuji Temple. This story is about a local priest who looked after the Gotokuji Temple in Tokyo, who despite his poverty would share his food with his cat. One day a man who is said to have been a samurai took shelter under one of the temple's nearby trees. The man saw the cat who was beckoning to him to come to the temple. And as he approached the cat, a bolt of lightning struck the tree that he was underneath, causing it to crash to the ground where he would have been taking shelter had the cat not signaled him to move. So grateful to the cat, the samurai turned out to be a very wealthy man and he rewarded the temple with funding. Years later when the cat died, a special burial was made in his honor of what we now know today as the lucky cat. In another account, it was said that a merchant was traveling around selling his wares and he got stuck in a thunderstorm. And the same type of thing, he beckoned for the businessman or the merchant to come to the temple and he did. And again, I think the tree was struck down by lightning and for him being grateful to the cat, he rewarded the temple with a monetary donation. 
The third legend that I found on this website called catster.com, um, it's a little bit, uh, I'll say trigger warning. It's, uh, it's It includes animal cruelty. Um, a common legend surrounding the Manikinigo is a peculiar one. A geisha had a pet cat that she adored, but one day it was tugging at her kimono and the owner of the brothel thought that the cat was possessed. So he sliced off its head with a sword. The flying cat had actually landed on a snake that was about to strike and the cat's um, fangs killed the snake, but it saved the woman. And this geisha was so distraught at the loss of her cat that she had one of her customers make a statue of the cat to cheer her up. This is the first time I've heard about this one. <laughs> and apparently the Gotokuji Temple is still really widely visited by people. And they have a lot of souvenir shops around that sell waving kitties. So if you do want to use a Maniki Nico or a Lucky Cat within your business or your home, you know, you feel free. Um, I don't feel like the movement is enough to activate the area. Personally, I like either like a fan that's going nonstop or um, some sort of accumulation of water like a fish tank. But if you wish to use a Maniki Nico, here's some representation and some symbology that you can use. So it says here, while you'll mostly see a white Maniki Nico with orange or black spots, there are quite a few color variations and they are said to have a special meaning. So if it's calico, it's a traditional color combination. It's said to be the luckiest type. If it's white, it says it represents purity, happiness, and positive things to come. If it's gold, it's supposed to represent wealth and prosperity. If it's black, it's supposed to ward off evil. If it's red, it's supposed to give you success in love and relationships. And if it's green, it's supposed to represent good health. Also, holding different things can symbolize different things that the you know cat is lucky for. So it says if the cat is holding one Ryo, which is a Japanese coin, it says here that this is a Japanese coin from the Edo period, and a Ryo was considered to be a fortune back then. So it would be if the cat's holding a coin. Uh, if it's holding a magic money mallet, you will see a little small hammer, and that's supposed to represent wealth. It says when it's shaken, the mallet's supposed to attract wealth. So I don't know if this is one where the, the arm isn't moving. I don't think I've seen one like that. So if it's holding a fish, most likely a carp, that the fish is symbolic of abundance and good fortune, which we've um, kind of talked about in um, previous episodes that, you know, it's one of the dishes that will be eaten on our traditional, like the lunar or the Chinese New Year would be fish because it symbolizes abundance. Um, if it's holding a marble or a gem, this is another money magnet, it says. Some people believe that the crystal ball can represent wisdom. It does also say here that lucky cats can also be found to be holding gourds, which would be like those little wooloo gourds, um, prayer tablets, um, ingots, and these are all supposed to represent wealth and good luck, and the gourd would represent uh, good health. And a couple different things that were pointed out to us from, we have a feng shui master within my feng shui study group and um, he's from China. And so he kind of addresses some of these feng shui items, but he did mention before that if the left hand is raised, it's to invite customers in, but if the right hand is raised, it's supposed to just invite like prosperity in. And also you don't want to place out a statue of a kitty that's laying down. So I've seen some of these, um, it's a lazy cat, so it's supposed to... Um, be bad luck. You're not supposed to put one of those inside your business. And as you may notice, of course, this year is the year of the tiger, but why is there no cat on the Chinese zodiac? I think the simplest answer is that um, it's it's kind of said that cats weren't around when, you know, these astrological terms were kind of put with animals. And so, um, yeah, there's no cat on the Chinese zodiac. And perhaps I'll save that story for another day. For free energy mapping of your floor plan, please check the link in the show notes. To support today's podcast, go to learnfengshui.com, sign up for emails, leave a review, and share with your family and friends.